So I got a message on Instagram from somebody complaining about one of my videos. Nothing new, this is a pretty usual occurrence, but what interests me was that they said they were part of the Universalist Unitarian Church. Hmm, all of a sudden my interest is peaked a little bit more than usual. They said, hey Isaac, you know, you should really check out the teachings of the Universalist Unitarian Church. Um, stop being so rigid in your beliefs and open up a little bit, be a little bit more inclusive. And I was thinking, hey, you know what? I think I have a Universalist Unitarian Church in my city. Let me check out their website. So I hopped on Google and typed in Universalist Unitarian Church in my area. And lo and behold, yes, there was one not too far away. But before I got too deep in on their website, I got distracted. Come on, the design wasn't that compelling at all. Classic church website type stuff, you know what I'm saying? Little did I know that TikTok was listening to me. TikTok knew that I was interested for some reason in the Universalist Unitarian Church. And this is the video that popped up on my feed not too long later. Reasons why you would probably not be happy in a Unitarian Universalist congregation. So this is an interesting start. I mean, I feel like she's speaking right to me. I have the general impression that I wouldn't enjoy myself at a Universalist Unitarian Church service, but let's see what she has to say. And maybe, hey, maybe she's wrong. Maybe I would have a good time. First of all, if you believe that there is only one path, one way of understanding what is most holy and true, you're probably not going to be happy in a UU church because we are deliberately pluralist. We pull wisdom from all the different world's faiths and every individual UU gets to figure out what is most true for them. Yeah, um, that might be a problem. You see, in the Bible, Jesus says that he's the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. He declares himself as the truth, that not truth, truth cannot be merely subjective that you can make it up for yourself. You see, she said, oh, each person we pull from different faith tradition, traditions and each person concludes for themselves what is most true for them. That is not truth at all. That is a Opinion. And when you live in a world, when you have a worldview where subjective um, truth reigns supreme, then you can't know anything, that everything is relative, that there is no concrete certainty to anything in the universe. And that is just absurdity. So yeah, that doesn't really resonate with me. I don't know why you're trying to teach people things when you don't even claim to have an objective truth of any kind. It's just, you know, this is this is just kind of what I think, but there's no real truth. There's no real conclusive objective, you know, reality that we're living. It's all subjective. It's like, how do you, how do you going to teach anything at your church? I don't know. Maybe you don't teach anything. If you believe that people are born evil or with a propensity to evil, and it requires the intervening force of some type of a deity to get us to act decent, yeah, you're not going to be happy in a UU church. We believe in the inherent worth and dignity of all people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you see the switch there? Pay attention, guys. Do not fall asleep on this. She said, if you believe that people have this propensity towards sin and what is evil and they need a deity to intervene in order to for them to be able to act well, right? Which is what Christians believe. We believe that we're dead in our trespasses and sins, that the wages of sin is death, that we were all born with this sin nature. And it's not without the transforming work of Jesus that we can actually do what is right. We can do no good on our own. So yes, that is what we believe. But then did you see what she said? She said that we believe that everyone has dignity and worth. So we don't believe that. But it's like, hey, 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 lady, um, we we Christians, we believe that, too. We believe that everyone is created in the image of God with dignity and worth. Um, and we believe that every every human being is worthy of protection, which I'm sure. And based on what I'm seeing here, I'm sure she advocates for the disposal of little human beings in the womb. So, yes, we believe in the dignity and worth of each human being, but that doesn't mean that we don't have this sin nature that draws us towards what is sinful. If you believe that God has created a natural order and that families should fit this traditional model with certain gender roles, you're probably not going to be happy in one of our congregations. Yep, I, I have a feeling I'm not going to be too happy at a Universalist Unitarian Church, but let's press on. 
if it is important for you to hear about Jesus every Sunday. Uh, there are some exceptions. We do have what are called some affiliated churches that are more explicitly progressive Christian, but the vast, vast majority of UU congregations do not identify as Christian in any way, although there may be Christian, individual Christian members in it. Um, but so you're probably not going to hear about that every Sunday. And also, if it's really important to you to hear about God every Sunday, again, in most UU churches, that may not happen. Now, I would also say if, it, if it's really important to you that you never hear the word God, you might be able to find some congregations. But overall, no, we are a big religion. Yeah, I kind of want to hear about Jesus and God every week at church. Like, I mean, mm, that's kind of like base level. <laughs> I mean, even the Mormons are talking about Jesus every week unless, but they're talking about the wrong Jesus. So still not great, not good at all. Okay. But um, these guys are like, yeah, you, you're not going to talk about Jesus every week and we're not going to talk about God every week. It is basically just a social club for them. I mean, okay, you know what? That's what they want. Uh, it, it taps into something important here is that people want community. People want connection. People want the benefits of what God designed, uh, but they don't want God. Like they want the community and, and how God set things up so people can be nurtured and, and in community with one another and care for one another, but they don't want God. So they set up these churches and pull God right out of the equation intentionally. And they're, they're vocal about it, which I'm that's very interesting. If you believe that spirituality has no connection with the world of politics, you probably won't be happy in a UU church because this is a way of us living out our religious values. UU churches are often full of activists and they are involved in what many um, see as progressive causes. The environment, reproductive justice, LGBTQIA plus issues, voting rights, now I totally believe that our faith should have implications on our politics. Absolutely, there is no neutrality. God's standard, his morality, his truth has implications to the laws that we make in our society 100%. But you notice there, at the beginning, she disposed of objective truth. She disposed of objective truth. And yet at the end, she's saying that these are the causes that we fight for. Why does she fight for them? Well, because she believes they are right and they are good and they are true and that other ones the people that are fighting against these things are evil and wrong and and bigoted and and so you see okay it's not that she doesn't have a morality or she has a doesn't have a standard for what is right and wrong or truthful or false it is rather that she doesn't like god's standard and that is what it comes down to so often. Let's take a look at this website for a second. I'm not going to dox these people because I don't want you guys sending them messages or whatever else. I mean, you can go if you want to visit your own Unitarian Universalist church and check it out, see what it's about, maybe have some conversations with people afterwards. That could be an interesting thing that you could do. Um, but one of the things that caught my attention was these child dedications. I'm like, who are you dedicating the child to? If you're not talking about Jesus, you're not talking about God. And they say, rather than holding Christian style baptisms or christenings, most Unitarian Universalist congregations congregations, including ours, have child dedication ceremonies for infants and children. Okay, well, who, are you in, who, are you, who are you dedicating them to? I don't know. Uh, child dedications are an expression of mutual community and support between guardians of a children, of a child, of a children, and uh, con the congregation at large. I love how they put guardians there. It's like because they don't want to say mom and dad because, you know, there's not going to be that many just moms and dads. There's going to be some days and some thems and some she's and some other she's and it's like okay well i guess you can't really use that kind of gender specific language it'd probably be offensive in general uh, during a child ded dedication the guardian or guardians pledge to live with our principles and aspirations and the congregation pledges to support the entire family in their spiritual and religious development you see they have principles they have aspirations where are they coming from i wonder where are they coming from they're just made up Ah, goofy, we're feeling a little goofy today. Let's just make up some principles and aspirations that we can all hold to. And you're like, okay, wait a minute. So we're not holding the Bible. We're not holding to what God says, but we're holding up to some 
person that maybe started the Universalist Unitarian Church or is the pastor of this Unitarian Universalist Church that's just making this stuff up and we're just all supposed to go along with it saying that these are our united principles and aspirations? It's like, this seems much more culty than maybe you're trying to paint it to be. I'm so interested in the fact that they still have a worship tab. It's like, who are you worshiping? If you rarely talk about Jesus, if you rarely talk about God, what are you worshiping? Yourself? The earth? I don't understand. Uh, Unitarian, Unitarian Universalist congregations draw from a variety of religious and spiritual sources. This is a reflection in the worship you'll experience in the congregation. Services also include, uh, often include readings and texts from world religions and from ancient and modern poetry and literature. The congregation may sing, share, and listen to music, whether classical, folk, or modern. Could you imagine them just putting on a Bob Dylan song and everyone's just singing along? Or, you know, a John Denver song. It's like, country roads, take me home. And then everyone's just like raising their hands. And it's just like a big folk hippie fest. I guess that could honestly happen in a Universalist Unitarian Church. Oh, there's a what to expect in worship tab. I guess if I were to visit, I should read this. Oh, this is quite long. This is what I'm saying when this church, this church is dressing in drag. This is a, a drag church. Uh, and it's not to merely just try to be offensive or hyperbolic. It is to say that churches that call themselves churches, and yet they they have like some of the the elements of it, the structure of it, uh, but the foundation is gone. It's actually not a church. It, it is pretending to be something that is not. Similar to a man dressing up as a woman in drag, he's not a woman. He's pretending to be. On the outside, you might be like. Is that a woman? I mean, rarely would you see that, you know, not be able to distinguish for somebody in drag. But even still, it's like, okay, that's not a woman. On the inside, that's a man. Anyway, let me know if you have any experience with the Universalist Unitarian Church. If you knew, if you know more about this than what I've kind of stated, fill us in in the comments down below. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. Thank you for so much for supporting what I do and equipping people to follow Jesus daily. Um, and if you want to support, click the link in my description and get access to all sorts of rewards. Our Discord, we have video chats and exclusive videos as well. And it would be a huge blessing because this is the way that I continue to do what I'm doing. Until next time, God bless.